it's some of both. Uh, we try to construct theoretical models that uh, represent real life situations, but like any model, they simplify the situation, and we try to derive consequences of our assumptions. It's a mathematical model, so we deduce what our assumptions uh, indicate. We prove theorems, as they're called, uh, but we also ask about the applicability of these uh, theorems, these consequences in real life cases. Uh, so one gets one's inspiration usually from observing what happens in the real world, and those are the kinds of things I teach. Uh, but I try to make them more coherent, um, understand them at a more scientific level by constructing a model. A model might be something like um, that uh, if you can array the candidates on a left-right continuum, you will vote for the candidate closest to you. Now, that uh, is off is complicated often by the fact that the person closest to you, uh, the candidate, uh, might be somebody who has little chance of winning. So you might want to alter your choice to vote for a more viable second choice or third choice. Uh, a good example of this was the 2000 U.S. presidential election uh, in which Ralph Nader was a third party candidate he ended up getting less than 3% of the popular vote. He won no <coughs> state, so he got no uh, electoral votes. And NATO supporters, uh, generally on the far left, uh, were torn. Uh, should they vote for NATO, uh, who had no chance of winning, or should they switch to a second choice? For many of the NATO supporters, that would have been the Democrat, Al Gore. Uh, and in some cases, uh, they were torn. And one consequence of being torn is you don't vote at all. You can't make up your mind. But some switched and some did not switch. Um, of course, the major consequence was that enough stuck with Nader uh, so that um, he, by all accounts, uh, affected the election outcome. In particular, in Florida, Bush in the end got about 500, one, beat Gore by about 500 votes, um, but there were 97,000 NATO supporters uh, in Florida, and if most of them had gone for Gore as a second choice, um, then Gore would have won by tens of thousands of votes instead of losing by about 500. That would have changed the outcome uh, in the, the country as a whole, and we would have had a different president. <laughs> so that's a good example of a so-called spoiler uh, somebody who can't win, who uh, changes the election outcome. So those are the kinds of situations that we study, and I think these models are very helpful in understanding them. Well, I think uh, what I just suggested about the 2000 election is the example. If you feel that the uh, consequences of electing Bush, let's say you're a Democrat, uh, far left leaning, uh, are sufficiently uh, problematic, then, and you are a NATO supporter, then you might well switch. That would be the rational choice. But if you think neither candidate uh, was very good, uh, as NATO argued, they were both cut of the same cloth, then uh, you would not switch, and uh, your vote would be more a protest vote. So uh, rationality may move voters in different directions depending on their preferences, their goals. Do you want to just protest uh, or do you want to affect the election outcome or try to affect the election outcome? Mm -hmm.